postman hat, postman hat, and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman hat, postman hat, postman hat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring, letters through your door. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy. It all started early one morning when Peter Fogg met Mrs. Pottage. Morning, Peter. Morning, Mrs. Pottage. She was on her way to the post office with a big parcel, a very big parcel. Shop. Anybody in? Hello, Mrs. Pottage. I was just brewing up. Would you like a cup? Hello, Mrs. Goggins. Well, I'd love one, but I mustn't stop. Don't want to be late taking the twins into Pencaster. Not too disappointed about the tour, are they? They'll be back by this evening, in time to join in the fun. How much for the parcel? There, now that'll be three pounds, please. Still, it's a pity the twins will be missing the mystery tour. Oh, they're too excited about their birthday treat to worry about that. Well, I must say, it's certainly a mystery. Even Cat, who's taking them in the post bus, doesn't know where they're going. Oh, that must be him now. Morning, all. Morning, Pat. There you are, Pat. I'd better be off. Good luck with the mystery tour. Don't get lost. I think getting lost might be part of the fun. Well, it'll make a change from delivering the post. <laughs> it certainly will. I wonder where Mr Pringle is taking us. Bless me, is that the time? I must be off. They'll be waiting for me at the school. Bye for now. Bye, Pat. Pat was on his way. He had already done his rounds early, and there was nothing to pick up. Good morning, Pat. Good morning. It wasn't far, just round the corner to the village school. He was right on time. What are we waiting for? Anyone missing? Let me see. Lucy, Sarah, Julian, Charlie and Bill. Good. I'll present. Hello, Pat. Ready? Hello, everyone. I'm ready to go when you are. But where to? Well, I think that someone should read out the first clue. Who's it to be? Me. 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 I want to. I want to. Me, me, me. Mr. Pringle gave the paper to Lucy Selby. Find a spinning granny. She'll give you some thread. A spinning granny? She'll get dizzy. Mine would. Now then, we want to be home before dark. So have a good think. Then let's be off. First. How can a granny spin without getting dizzy? A coin.
time with a washing machine, a wheel, a spinning wheel. I know who has a wheel like that, Granny Dryden. Shall we go and see? First stop, Granny Dryden, please, Pat. I think I know where that is. All aboard the post bus. Come along, children. Hooray! 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 Mind the step. Don't push. I want a seat near the window. Where's Charlie? Mr. Gringo going to sit in front Mind the door! Come on, Lucy, you're holding the court up. You'd better sit with me, Mr. Pringle, in case we get lost. Off they went. Sit down, I can't see. I bet I'll solve all the mystery questions. I bet you don't, I bet you don't. I will, I will. I'm better at it than you are. I wish we could have this. It was very quiet at Granny Dryden's cottage. Charlie knocked at the door, whilst Lucy peeped in at the window. At first, don't push. Was this the mysterious bit? They all crept in to find out. What a surprise! Sitting at an old-fashioned spinning wheel, in clothes they had only seen in books, was Granny Dryden, fast asleep. <coughs> oh, dearie me! I must have dropped off to sleep! Hello, Granny Dryden. We're the mystery tour. We've come for the thread. I nearly forgot. Now, now, what did I do with it? It's somewhere in here. Ah, what's this? That's it, I think. Thanks, Granny Dryden. Oh, a little parcel. Hmm, there's a reel of cotton. And it says on the paper, go to a place where the night is not dark. Give the cotton to a lady. Where the night is not dark, but it's always dark at night. I know where there's a knight. Well, his suit of armour anyway. At Garner Hall, where Major Forbes lives. And the suit of armour is bright and shiny, so it's never dark. What about the lady? There's only Major Forbes at Garner Hall. I suggest we go and find out. Bye, Granny Dragon. Bye. Bye. Bye, -bye. Um, won't you stop for a cup of tea? Oh, we'd, we'd love one, but we have to be off. Uh, sorry. Bye. Thanks, Granny Dryden. I wish we could have this every day instead of school. All aboard for Garner Hall. You mustn't make a mistake on a mystery tour, otherwise you end up getting lost. But Pat soon found Garner Hall, his next stop. Where's the night? Spooky, I call it. There's no lady either. I can hear someone. <laughs> Made it at last. Hello, one and all. Hey up! It's the night! Lady Hubbard greets you with her basket of surprises. Now, who's to give me something? Oh, you do look lovely, Miss Hubbard. Oh, thank you, Lucy. Now, what about the basket? Thanks, Miss Hubbard. Have a look in the basket. You might find the next clue. I've got it! It says... Find a royal crown in a very small town. Go post haste. There is no time to waste. A royal crown? Haven't seen any in Greendale. There's one on the post bus. And there's another on Pat's van. Pat always stops at the post office. We'll ask him to stop there again today, shall we? Come on. Good luck. Bye. Bye-bye. Mind how you go. Cheerio. Bye. Bye. Cheerio. That wasn't easy. But we're not finished yet. Bet we get the next one quick. Look who's talking. Oh, shut up, you two. It didn't take them long to get back to the village. 
and on to the post office. Here they come. Oh, I feel all funny dressed up like this. Who ready for Greendale? Gracious me. It sounds as though you're at a football match. Are you part of the mystery tour? We are. We are. Could I have the next clue, please? Um, uh, now, how did it go? Uh, I've got it. Take the road to a place where a tree stands tall. Don't let a man stop you if he should call. Take and blow this trumpet, then wait. And this key will later help you to open the gate. I think we can remember that. Thanks. Off you go, Pat. Careful. See you soon. Have fun. Bye. 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 The children were quiet. They were thinking about the next clue. Then, Charlie had a go on the toy trumpet. It wasn't very quiet after that. What's this? A highwayman. Um, stand and deliver. Uh, the thing's stuck. Um, come on. What's he doing, yes. Mr. Pringle? Stand I think deliver. he's got something caught in his coat pocket. Mm. Ah, got you. <laughs> Your money or I'll tickle you helpless. <laughs> Julian, I think you should ask Ted for the last clue. Here you are, young Julian. Thanks, Mr. Highwayman. Cheers. Mr. Pringle, I've got the next clue. Let's not waste time. I'll read it out. Oh, do shut it up. It says, you must find a straw man. He works all day and he works all night. He stands quite still to give the birds a fright. Blow the trumpet and unlock the gate. I've got the trumpet. We know. What about the straw man? It's a scarecrow. Next stop... A scarecrow. Bye, highwayman. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Mind how you go. I wish I could dress up like that. And I'd take money off people. You'd lose your specs, silly. Go on, give over. They soon came to the scarecrow. He was standing outside Thompson Ground. Come on, follow me. Safe and sound and thirsty. Have you got something for a hungry highwayman? Hello, welcome to the fancy dress party. Yippee! I want a hat like Ted Glenn. Jess was there, wondering what all the fuss was about. Well, what's the mystery? Hey, you finally made it. It was the children who got us here. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Black and white cat.